everybody, welcome to our first November Corrections of the Year. Very excited. I said uh, Joseph Goebbels, it's Yosef Goebbels. <laughs> so apologies to him and his family. His, fam his family and him? Him and his family. Want to get it right. Casey's also, you know, grammar Nazi. <laughs> Although I bet you're not both. I said Spar Wars, it's Star Wars. <laughs> I thought both worked, but I guess I will defer to the nerds. I thought in that galaxy that the T's and the P's were just sort of interchangeable. I said uh, Richard Attenborough. I was told it's pronounced written Richard Attenborough. I've made it too much. Richard Attenborough. And in New England, where I grew up, it's, we say Richard Attenborough. We say it uh, derisively about people who have weird pets. Kids got four lizards and a boa constrictor. <laughs> Richard Attenborough. <laughs> my sister's friends with his, uh... <laughs> my sister's friends with his cousin, been to his house, I guess he freezes his <laughs> mice. Got a <laughs> fridge full of mice, <laughs> weirdo. Richard Attenborough. <laughs> Speaking of New England, I've, we've been talking about, I don't want to get into it, this feud. I referred to my home state of New Hampshire as an upside down Vermont. And the reality is, uh, Vermont's an upside down New Hampshire. New Hampshire joined the union like almost three years before Vermont. Like we, we did that shape first. <laughs> Vermont probably waited, wanted to make sure the union had like an organic section in their grocery store. You're not better than us. We talked about Joe Manchin's houseboat, and we made the point that it's a yacht. It's not really a houseboat. She's a, a picture of it. It's not how you'd picture a houseboat. And uh, we also said we, houseboats don't have cursive on the back, the name of the boat. Multiple people said that's not cursive, that's script. Cursive, the letters have to connect. And that was just fancy script. And they said, but we don't blame you because you don't teach cursive anymore in schools. And it's true, they barely, I mean, this is the problem with schools now. And when they do teach kids cursives, it, it's only to write mean things about white people. <laughs> cursive race training. Can we show up that photo of Lowe's that I criticized? I gave our, um, I said to her, you know, we've had trouble with our graphics department. I'm like, look at this. So you have, you know, aisle 61 and 62 on one side and then aisle 17 on the other. Obviously that's not how it looks. A bunch of people wrote up and uh, said, look, I once personally said I work at Lowe's, that's how it looks. A lot of people said I go to Lowe's, that's how it looks. And uh, I know what you're thinking, that I'm some sort of, um, I don't know, liberal elite who doesn't go to home stores. Um, I was talking about how everybody, you know, was celebrating. Basically, the, the news took a week off reporting anything, except for the fact that Colin Jost passed me as the update anchor, hosted the most episodes of Weekend Update. And I said, well, you're all throwing crowns at his feet. And someone said, it's casting crowns. That's in the Bible, it's casting crowns. I will admit I'm not a, a Bible reader. Two places you would not find me growing up. Church and Lowe's. <laughs> um, so I looked it up, because I wanted to see if it was casting crowns or throwing crowns. I looked it up, and it was a revelation. It was in, it was in Revelation. Um, somebody said, you know, he didn't actually pass you, Colin Jost. Because if you uh, think about it, 
some of your weekend updates, you were a solo anchor, whereas all of his have been either with Cecily or Che. So he should really only get half points for those, whereas a lot of yours were full points. So if you count it that way, you're way ahead. And I was very excited by this theory that I was buying into it. And then I looked at who wrote it, and the name was Mike Pillow Fan. I was like, it was Mike Lindell. <laughs> and I just bought in, and I realize now, like, that's what Trump does. If he's telling you something you want to hear, sounds like a pretty sharp guy. We had a, we showed a photo of Mike Lindell in Joker makeup and said, why so serious? But the Joker makeup was Joaquin Phoenix Joker, not Heath Ledger Joker. And People, you know, comic book fans are upset because each Joker has sort of their own iconic phrase. Heath Ledger was, why so serious? Uh, Jack Nicholson was, way to get a load of me. Um, Jared Leto was, you cut all my scenes? <laughs> so we talked about Gonzo and his genitals. Here's how it came up. There was a, it was based on the gift of the Magi, and there was a gift of the Magi story in the 1978 Sesame Street Christmas special. I said originally that it was a Muppets Christmas special, and then I had to clarify that that actually never aired because in a lot of the shots, you could see Gonzo's <laughs> And then someone said, you know, he doesn't, first of all, why would you even assume Gonzo has one? Gonzo's gender is never established, and that's very fair, but we did, we do, we do have a picture of it. Now, this is obviously not for everyone. You know, if you don't want to see a picture of Gonzo's penis, you should look away now. Let's take a look. <laughs> so it kind of makes sense. I talked about eating Necco wafers for Halloween, and a lot of people said Necco wafers, they don't make those anymore, they're discontinued. Uh, to that I would just say, you don't think there's some weirdos in New York who bought a bunch of Necco wafers a decade ago and have just been slowly handing them out? You don't think people are giving away old candy bars in New York City? You don't think if you knock on Rudy Giuliani's door, he's not gonna give you a Reggie bar? <laughs> I said that if you, uh, Baba Duke, which is a, a horror movie, an Australian horror movie, I also said it sounds like the slang to Baba Duke is to uh, get super drunk and your pants. And then later in that closer look, I said uh, someone would Baba Duke their pants, to which a person said, You already said Baba Duking means your pants, so to Baba Duke your pants would be to your pants your pants. Sorry. Oh, this isn't really a correction. This is just something that's like coming down the pike that we're a little worried about. We've been talking a lot. Uh, by the time you see this, the Jets will have played on Thursday night football. And we're very worried that the Jets might be good now. And if the Jets are good now, we, we're gonna shut it down. Uh, they have a, a new quarterback uh, through for 400 yards last week against the Bengals, Mike White, who, I mean, with that and White Lotus, what a year. We showed a picture of baby Hitler. Can we show the baby Hitler picture? And then we had a conversation. A lot of people said, hey, Hitler's eyes weren't blue. And then someone else said, actually, they were blue. And people just think they're brown because mostly you saw black and white pictures of Hitler. And so people assumed they were brown, but he did have blue eyes. And there was a lot of back and forth. And then someone kind of snuck in with a correction, sometimes there's a very, like sometimes the jackals get so specific that they miss a real easy one. And it was like days later that someone said, a baby can't grow a mustache. <laughs> can't argue with it. We talked about how during the Trump era, our 
jokes, jokes wrote themselves. And then I also talked about how we had elves that Shoemaker was very mean to. And people said, what is it? Do the jokes write themselves or were the jokes uh, written by elves? What happened was someone said, who wrote your jokes? And I went, them's elves. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> it's funny to think, we, you know, we talked about the fact that, and I think why we got to that point, it's like, you know, the elves in a shoemaker, the shoemaker, a very, very famous uh, fable. And it, it is funny to me that like, shoemaker, at some point you had someone in your life who was a shoemaker. Who I'm sure like, was like, one size fits all. <laughs> and you're like, how does that even work? You're like, nine. Shoemaker, uh, half uh, Italian, half German, which is why every day at work I feel like I'm fighting World War II. <laughs> um, we had a photo of rats, a rat with a six pack. Multiple people told me uh, based on rats' muscles, they only have four packs. Some Richard Attenborough. <laughs> uh, I sang the lyrics to a 10,000 Maniac song. I said, these are the days to remember. I got it wrong. It's these are days to remember. And then Baze said, more like these are lyrics to forget. And I had to take him aside and say, you have to stop pitching on corrections. I don't think, I don't think you see what we're trying to do here. We talked about John Steinbeck and I did a, a bit about him and his editor and then a bunch of people said his editor had a name and there were a few suggestions people had of his editor. And, and so then I started digging into it, which happens a lot. One of the joys of corrections is you find out things you didn't know. And um, you can look at it, Steinbeck articles. And this is a true story. This happened. I'm not allowed to say this is a true story that happened. People don't like that. Oh, I almost forgot one thing about the elves. I talked about how Shoemaker threw the elves out the window. And people said, uh, 30 Rock, the windows don't open. You, he couldn't throw an elf out the window. And it's true, they used to open all the way, uh, but now they just open a little bit. But Shoemaker, it's enough for Shoemaker to really <laughs> muscle an elf out. <laughs> Steinbeck. It turns out that in 1930, using a pen name, John Steinbeck, Nobel winner, Pulitzer winner, wrote a werewolf murder mystery called Murder at Full Moon that the Steinbeck estate will not publish because he did not publish it in his... There's a Steinbeck... Imagine this poor man who just wanted to write fun things. <laughs> wrote a werewolf murder mystery, brought it to his editor, and his editor was like, people don't like stuff like this. Give me something on the dust bowl. <laughs> Write me something about a dumb guy who doesn't know his own strength. <laughs> I got something called Travels with Charlie. That sounds like it stinks. <laughs> I only... <laughs> I only read Travels with Charlie in school. Bayes, did you read Travels with Charlie? I think it stinks. <laughs> when I was a kid, I didn't like it. I, maybe I'll give it another chance. I won't. I feel bad. If you are a jackal and you feel like I should give Travels with Charlie another try. But then if you're also like, you know what else is good? A separate piece, then no. Okay. Mugs. We had a couple of mugs last week. And it was, it was our Halloween week. And... Uh, I wanted to uh, see if you guys knew what they were. So this one right here. Yeah. So that, uh, that's a, a, a jack-o'-lantern. And then a bunch of people said, yeah, but it shouldn't be black. There should be like, it should be like yellow from the candle. And uh, to that I'd only say, I made it black for a reason because jackals uh, have no light inside them. 
than this. This is the deep cut right here. I'm really proud of this. So this is a this is a jackal uh, bring. This is a jackal intern. <laughs> And uh, Tara from Graphics made that. And a lot of people said, uh, is this our, or is our close up over there? Let me get a close up of this. So a lot of people said, uh, the, 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 there's a problem. That's not a, that's not a jackal, that's a hyena. <laughs> and uh, so I went down to uh, Graphics, I went down to Tara. And uh, Tara is very good at her job, but everybody who works here will attest, mean. <laughs> mean person, and uh, I said a lot of the jackals are saying that you did not represent them on that mug, that that is a hyena, and I said, do you have anything to say to them? And uh, she said, did you show them the other side of the mug? And I said, I didn't even realize there was anything on the other side of the mug. So uh, here you go, this is from Tara and Graphics, everybody. See you next week.